Hey, good morning. So, working my way through the Portland line. Uh, electric 14 inch chainsaw. I've got some touch ups to do in the yard, and I want to experiment with maybe doing some resawing with this. It's not going to be very powerful with a 9 amp motor compared to like a gas chainsaw. But this isn't meant to be a replacement for a gas chainsaw. This is light duty work. Electric 14 inch, 9 amps. Hey, it's around the house type thing, not out in the fields. So it's got this safety. You just slide over the end. It doesn't really lock to anything, so it can come off kind of easy. You can tell a lot of it from the manual. Product, the number is 64497, and exploded view diagram. This is actually important. On an electric chainsaw like this, you want to have problems right in here if you have problems. So you need to know how this goes together. I've never had to touch the motor. It's more the chain assembly here. When you first get it, make note of a few things. How the chain is mounted. The cutter is pointed this way. The cutting piece would be in this dip. I have a, I also got their chainsaw sharpener and we'll run this through it. Demonstrate that also. So they give you an accessory pack. They give you chain oil. Chain oil goes in here. Now, you would be surprised, or maybe not, some of the things I've used as chain oil. You can get as dirty as used motor oil. Not recommended, first because it's filthy as hell, and second because it doesn't work as well. This is basically pneumatic oil. There's a safety lock, trigger, pull the safety lock, activate it right there. I like that they give you this view of how full the chain oil is. So that's like a little dust cover. So take that off. Off. Gives you a little insert. Shouldn't lose that. If you lose that, you have to tighten against this plastic with some washers. And that's not going to hold up as well as this. Okay, so it's pretty basic design. This turns the chain. This guides the chain. I'll tell you the, the problems I've had with this type of saw in the past, and emphasize this type, not this one, is the, keeping the tension on this. But the way they've designed this is this black piece aligns the cover, and it also aligns. It also uses this pin to place the bar. So to me, this is pretty basic, very common design. So it's got a tab here. Insert that tab. So put this on. I always finger tighten these. To me, it saves a lot of time. You want this to be fairly tight. You don't want to break the casing, but you want it to be fairly tight. like this protects your hand from things you cut and from this if it breaks it helps protect that hand it won't protect this one Oregon double guard 91 low kickback it's not going to be that fast it actually gives you a little graphic there to show you the way these are supposed to go I'd recommend you have that on all the time you're not actually using it keeps you from getting against it and maybe tearing your clothes or your hands or other flesh they thought of a lot of features to put in this saw. These diamond backs are when you put your saw up against a tree, it'll give you something to lever against. So that sets against the tree and then you move this. Works really well. And this is gonna be hard to see, but there is an Allen wrench that goes right there. When you put this on, you want this to be a certain tightness. And you see that is extremely tight. Gauge that how far you can pull it out right now. It's tight enough that you cannot disconnect the chain. So this is the adjustment to push that bar out or pull it back. So that's going to keep the tension on this. And you're going to have to take the tension out if you ever want to take that blade off. 
you want to have to put the tension back in to press the bar back out. Uh, the only reason you take the chain off is if it broke, which would be highly unlikely, or if you wanted to sharpen it. I would probably wouldn't make that quite so tight, but this is factory, so I'm assuming that's the way they want you to use it. There is, I did notice there is oil in that groove. So I pull those out, there's oil on the teeth. According to the window, there is no oil, so you must oil that specifically at the factory. Okay, a very important table they have in the manual is what type of an extension cord. If you go these lengths, you need these gauge wires. So the saw is nine amps, for, so for nine amps, 18 gauge for 25 foot, uh, it says you, you shouldn't go 150 feet. 10 gauge cable for nine amps. If you don't do this, you'll get amperage drop across that cable and this won't run as well. If you're like me and you have generators and battery backup systems, you're already in that range for pretty much anything. All of our extension cords are at least 12. So you can see, probably shouldn't go over 75 feet with this saw with nine amps, so I got 12 gauge. I always buy 12 gauge anyway. I thought about buying 10, but I really don't need to go 100 feet. I usually buy 25 foot cables and string them together and make them 12. So I can do that. It has another feature, is this. You run your extension cord in one side, put it under there, run it back around, connect it into this, hey, you're okay. Now they have a dust cover on this. It's made to fit right over the nut. Now I've got these two things. I've got to keep track of these because I want to keep this because it's the right size. I want to keep this because it's the right size. But I always have trouble keeping track of those. I don't want to keep it attached to it like I normally would unless I did it to the cord, which isn't long enough, by the way, because I don't want them to leave the shop. That's a good way to lose them. Okay, so there's first look at the Portland 14-inch electric chainsaw, item 64497, and we'll show it in action. Portland 14-inch, I think I looked up, it's uh, 9 amp. I just released a new one from Bauer that's 14 amp. I'll probably be buying it. And uh, this is a 14 inch, the Bauer is 16 inch, so I'll probably be buying one of those. I had this cord for a while and I use it outside a lot. The cord used to be this color. Been outside a lot. So I notice that this is a little smaller, but it still accepts that. So let's get to it. Now this should pull the wood back to me. And I do have chain cord. safety you have to push your thumb up to make it come on. Because of that arrangement of the safety, my grip slipped just a little, so right in the middle of that it paused. Well that's because my hand slipped off the trigger and I had to put it back on. So this is hardwood, it's walnut. It's pretty dry. Pretty dry, it's been left outside, it's got some cracks in it. But this went right through with no problem. I let the chainsaw do the work while I try to force it. This is only 9 amps. It's not going to be like a gas chainsaw. And why did I buy one of these? This is the only kind of work I do with a chainsaw. I trim up trees around my property, cut branches like this, trees like this. So, nothing huge. So, there it is in action. So, if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.